The greatest problem most monorail designs need to overcome is balance. Having only one rail to work with makes it tricky to come up with a stable vehicle, as either the rolling stock needs to be over-engineered to keep it upright or the rail needs to be bigger to allow the vehicle to gain better purchase. Both of these methods, however, have their drawbacks, which is why one engineer came up with a much more simple solution. Just give them stabilizers. In 1868, engineer William Thorold proposed an idea for a ground-level monorail system. The premise was simple. Have the rail laid at ground level and mount the wheels of the rolling stock along the middle of their frames. These wheels would be double-flanged in order to keep them on the rails, and to prevent the wagons from falling over, a single, large wheel would stick out on the right-hand side. This way, most of the weight was applied to the rails, granting the benefit of less rolling friction, while also gaining the ability to negotiate much tighter bends thanks to the lack of curve resistance. Fellow engineer W.J. Ewing developed the idea further in 1895, with plans to patent the design for use on construction site railways. As Ewing lived in India at the time, the design was picked up by Colonel Charles W. Bowles, a civil engineer who, in 1900, was tasked with various construction projects on the Bengal Nagpur Railway. Bowles used Ewing's system to help move materials during the railway's construction, and found it to be ideal for the job, leading to other companies adopting Ewing's monorails for use in mines and sawmills. In 1902, the Cundale Valley Light Railway was built using this system to transport tea and other supplies for the Canan Devan Hills Plantations Company. A cart road was initially used, but because the monorail only required one rail to work, the track could be laid along the roadway without blocking access to the rest of the road, and the balance wheel could run on the ground without the need for any special kind of paving or groundwork. With the system proving to have its merits, when Maharaja Sir Bhupinder Singh of Patiala tasked Bowles with building a railway to connect Basi with the railway at Sarind, Bowles naturally proposed to build the line using the Ewing system, and Singh, being quite an extravagant man, agreed. It wasn't just the monorail's novelty that made it an appealing choice, as much of the line would follow public roads. With only one rail needed, the line could be placed at the side of the road, with the balance wheel rolling on the road, not only giving the wheel a smooth surface to run on, but also meant the rails took up a minute amount of road space. The monorail was also capable of negotiating tight bends, climbing steep grades, and cost a fraction of the price of a standard railway to build and maintain, making it ideal for passing through urban areas. Opened in 1907, the Patiala State Monorail Trainways connected Sarind to Morinda, as well as Patiala to Sanam, with a total of 50 miles of track laid. 75 goods wagons were built for use on the lines, along with 15 passenger carriages, with the primary source of motive power being mules and bullocks. The PSMT also had four locomotives built by Orenstein and Koppel for use on the Patiala Sunam line. These 030 engines were essentially modified versions of the Orenstein and Koppel standard 060 design, with the driving wheels mounted at the center of the axle. The wheels were double flanged, with the middle wheel being blind to allow the engine to better handle bends. To help with balance, the right-hand water tank was slightly wider than the left, so as to lean the engine more towards the balance wheel. And because of the extra cab space this provided, the firebox door was mounted on the right side of the firebox as opposed to the rear. Despite their unusual appearance, it seems the engines worked well on the line. However, mules and bullocks seem to remain the dominant means of moving wagons. Though the primary traffic of the lines was freight, mostly agricultural produce such as wheat, they still carried a significant amount of passenger traffic, the Sarind to Marinda line carrying an average of 20,000 passengers a month. Despite its seeming success, however, Ewing's monorail system still had its problems. It was noted on the Cundale Valley Light Railway that when the balance wheels of the wagons were running on the road, it made it impossible to safely pass them, necessitating the construction of passing places along the line. 
Despite the promised ability for the balance wheels to run over pretty much all terrain, it was found that unless the road was smooth, the wheels would shake themselves to bits, and so a smooth path would have to be maintained to ensure smooth running, somewhat negating the main benefit of the design. Having infrastructure in place to turn the wagons round too would also be necessary in order to make sure the balance wheel was on the correct side of the rail. On top of that, the double-flanged wheels would grind on tight bends, requiring more effort to pull them around the curves. Wagons had a tendency to derail on bends when travelling at speed too, meaning the monorail wasn't ideal for fast transport. The KVLR's monorail only lasted for six years before it was finally pulled up and replaced with a standard two-foot narrow-gauge railway. The PSMT lasted a little longer, but its monopoly on urban goods traffic was quickly toppled by automobiles and improved roads in 1912. Whether or not it suffered from the same ailments as the KVLR isn't reported, but given that no further monorails were built using the Ewing system, it's fair to say it likely had its own issues. By the 1920s, the PSMT was in decline, and in October 1927, the line was closed. As the infrastructure was still in place, Bowles continued to experiment with the Ewing design, building a petrol-powered locomotive in 1930, but ultimately, interest in the railway was long gone. Maharaja Bhupinder Singh eventually passed away in 1938 while Bowles was on leave in England. Bowles didn't have the heart to return to India, and with the government showing no interest in the monorail, it, along with most records of it, were abandoned. As the railway was given little publicity in its life, memory of it quickly faded. It wasn't until 1962 when some of the leftover rails and rolling stock were discovered in a public work department by Mike Sato that knowledge of the railway's existence became public again. Engine number four, along with a coach, was rescued and restored, being put on display at the National Railway Museum in New Delhi. As for the rest of the original line, little to nothing remains. Ewing's monorail system was an interesting idea. Stabilizers work on bikes after all, and in the right conditions it may be worth trying again. But given the design couldn't deliver on its promised benefits, don't expect to see it in use anytime soon. So for all those out there looking to build their own railway, make sure to remember that sticking stabilizers to rolling stock doesn't necessarily make for a merry monorail. Subscribe for more.